Hello everyone and welcome to Talk of the Town. The winter chill is in the air, but we have some great ideas to warm you up this February. Starting with a cooking lesson for the famous French fish stew known as Bula Bays. Mm. Plus we grab some paints and test our ability to create art with a little help from one of the best known local artists in the Poconos. Of course, we have a Valentine's Day surprise you can create for your sweetheart. But we start by bundling up and heading outside. Did you ever notice it's a lot easier to stick to an exercise plan if you have a buddy? I know I'm a lot more motivated if someone's expecting me and depending on me. But who says that buddy can't have four legs? There are so many homeless dogs and they'd all love to go for a walk with you. All you need to do is volunteer. We just wouldn't be able to do it on our own. You know, we are dependent 100% on donations. We have a staff, but we have the staff that we can afford, and we need a lot more people than we actually have. So the volunteers are really, they're our lifeblood. The Animal Welfare Society of Monroe, or Awesome, took over the old SPCA building on Godfrey Ridge Drive in Stroudsburg. Right now, they have 26 dogs that need exercise several times a day. To get those dogs out from being in a cage all day and all night, they love it. They love it. They're, you know, I don't want to say they're at it like a doggy camp here, but they are well loved, well taken care of. And when they go out, they look forward to it. They're happy. They burn some energy. They get socialization with other people and the handlers. So it's a big deal. Recently, Awesome has started organizing night walks. They had one last week. It was hugely successful. And uh, yeah, it was great. They got out, they came back, they were exhausted. A lot of them were able to hold it through the night. And uh, yeah, their energy was spent, so it was good. I use Buford a lot for my classes when I train the volunteers here, which uh, you know we try to do at least once or twice a month. We have volunteer days. And we're trying to get people to come and just spend a few hours with the dogs. We tell our volunteers, it's all about safety. Making sure the dogs stay safe and making sure the, you know, the volunteers stay safe. Mostly important, enjoy your walk with the dog, pay attention to the dog, uh, try not to be on the cell phones, and just watch your surroundings. I'm not taking Max for a walk. Max, Max is, is taking, taking me for, for a walk. walk. These guys are a little large and they kind of pull us around, but to, to um, you know, somebody who's older and wants to come walk the dog, you have smaller dogs. Oh, absolutely. Right? We, have, we have a lot of smaller dogs. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But it's good exercise to walk a bigger Abs dog. Well, absolutely. <laughs> a little bit of upper body yeah. workout as well. <laughs> well, these guys won't let you cheat. They'll make you keep walking. <laughs> the little dogs usually give up. You know, but these guys, um, again, most of the time, you know, they've been in a cage mostly the whole morning, other than their morning walk. Yeah, so they're actually looking forward to going out and having a good time. Max is in a hurry. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest part of the day. You know, he's getting the dogs out. Even on the cold days, you know, dogs have to be walked. Yeah. Max likes to walk. <laughs> and, and we're not stopping. Buford! Good job, Buford. <laughs> they did a good job, both of them. Yay! Very good. We realize they're volunteers, and, you know, we're grateful for that. And we'll try to accommodate them. Uh, basically, we certainly have need times more than other need times. First thing in the morning when the dogs have been in all night, they need to get out and let go because many of them won't go inside, so that's a long time for them. After our walk, Kim and I went inside to welcome one of Awesome's newest additions. And what's this one's name? Her name is Daisy. Oh, Daisy, did you Daisy, just get you're here? gonna get a bath. Oh, we're gonna give so. you a nice bath. Just put her in and give her nice massaging and sprinkle her with some of that. Hi, Daisy. Oh, it's nice water. It's nice and warm. Daisy, you're Ooh. gonna be so pretty. It smells good too. <laughs> Do you like that massage? It's so good. It's so We don't want to leave you like that or you'll be itchy. Get your chin and make sure there's no more soap. Come here, Daisy. Come here. Time to get out of there. 
Yeah, that's what does it the best. That's what makes it all look fluffy. Daisy is all cleaned up and she even has on her own little hoodie. That's right. She's ready to go for a walk. Once she's dry, she'll probably go on some walks before she leaves here, but we're hoping she gets adopted really fast. Like all the other animals here at the awesome shelter as well. Stay with us, Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs> February is a time when New Year's resolutions may start being forgotten. And if your New Year's resolution included leading a healthier lifestyle, maybe we can help. A healthy diet begins with choosing what you're going to eat. And reading labels and understanding them is a great way to start. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Marie. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. Nice to, see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What do you have for us today? Today I have a little label reading quiz for you. I'm going to test you and see how good you are in the grocery store. Sounds good. Ooh. Lindsay Vaughn is the dietitian at Kinsley's ShopRite in Broadheadsville. A dietitian at a grocery store? You bet! She's available for free nutrition consultations with customers hoping to live healthier lifestyles. So Kim, I'm going to start with you first. I want you to look at these three products here and tell me, how many servings do you think are in each product? Okay, well, I do read labels for the most part. I know every time you pick up a drink, there's more than one serving in it. So I'm guessing the Life Water is two servings. I don't know, it's kind of a fat bottle. Could even be two and a half. DiGiorno, I'm sorry, I don't care what that says. It's one serving. <laughs> <laughs> and this, if this it's healthy choice, so let's hope that they're being smart. That's, to me, that looks like one serving, too, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's not. Okay. You are pretty good. <laughs> the DiGiorno pizza is two servings, even though it is technically a personal pan. Um, the Sobe Life Water is also two servings, and the Healthy Choice Soup is also two servings, even though it's in a single serving container. Now, Lindsay, is the reason they do that because they want to try to trick people to think that, you know, oh, you're looking at this and you just assume that that's one serving, and so that it looks like it's better for you than what it is? That can absolutely, absolutely be a part of their marketing strategy. Also, they are doing that for convenience as well. So now we're going to look at some serving sizes and decide out of different options you have, which one would you choose based on the serving size. So we have a cracker chip here, and then we have a regular um, buttery type of cracker. Mm -hmm. And when you first look at it, how many calories are in the cracker chip versus our butter cracker? So it says the calorie count for one serving size here is 110 of the special K and 70 for the townhouse. So um, first, if you just if that's all you looked at, you would choose this. But I take it there's a catch. Absolutely. So now, <laughs> since you guys are so savvy, looking at the serving size. Mm -hmm. You can eat 30 of these, and you can only eat three of these. <laughs> so I'd rather have 30 of these. Absolutely. And the important thing to know here is that maybe you're going to eat more than likely you're going to eat more, more than, than three, three, three of three. these crackers. <laughs> what I really want people to understand is that when you're looking to make a choice, there's an easy rule to use. It's called the 5 and 20 rule. Basically, you look at the label, you look at the percent daily values right along the right-hand side of the label there, and if it's closer to 5%, you know that it's a lower source of the nutrient. If it's closer to 20%, it's going to be a higher source of the nutrient. So comparing these two labels, which one would be considered a low-fat food or low-fat dressing? Mm, this, this one. one. Because it's closer to the 4%. This one's not exactly high, but it's at 14%, somewhere in the middle. So next, Marie, I'm going to ask you, how many out of these sausage products here, which ones do you think are low fat? And you can look at the labels for this one. This one appears to be the lowest fat at first glance. That is reduced. That's only one link. That's one link. You have to check it all out, right? <laughs> okay, they're all one link. So this one appears to be the lowest fat. It says all natural, 70% less fat on the label. So hopefully that's a good indication. And it has 2.5 grams of fat and only one gram of saturated fat. Absolutely. So this one is considered the low fat sausage. Mm -hmm. Very good. You ladies are good at the label <laughs> reading. So cereal, the cereal aisle is incredibly confusing. 
And Especially when you have a teenage son who will eat the whole box <laughs> in one sitting. So it's one That's serving. Right. That's right. <laughs> one serving instead of oh, about 12. That's right. <laughs> what I'm really looking for in a label for feeling full and feeling fuller longer is going to be protein and fiber. Mm -hmm. So looking at our corn flakes, and let's compare it to our original Special K. Okay. Can you tell me about what the protein and fiber look like in these? Well, Special K has uh, six grams of protein versus two, and the fiber, dietary fiber zero, dietary fiber four percent. Okay, so Corn Flakes has more fiber, and Special K has more protein. So I don't know which is better. Absolutely. So Corn Flakes does have a little bit more fiber. It's only one gram. Mm -hmm. So out of these two, the winner would be special your Special K. Because of the protein. Because of the protein. Now. Looking at another one of Kellogg's products, a Special K with protein, compare these two with the protein and fiber. Okay, now you've got 10 grams of protein, so that's big. And the fiber, you're up to three grams of protein versus zero, so obviously this is the winner. Absolutely. Now, the trick with this is that you said your son's eating an entire box in one sitting. I don't blame him. <laughs> this is not going to fill you up as much. It's going to go right through. It's not going to stick in your stomach for very long at all. The protein and the fiber slows down the digestion process. You pay more because you're getting a better product. You're getting a better basically. product. Yeah. And when it comes to watching your budget and eating healthy, you have to think, if I eat half as much food but I pay a little bit more money, where am, am I really spending more money yeah. on the you're product? Evening so. out. So the only thing left is does it taste good? <laughs> does it taste good? It, should, it does. It does. <laughs> How many of these three snack products are considered low sodium? So it could be zero, one, two, or three. All right, at first glance, multi-grain, multi-grain, zero trans fat, so I think that's healthy. Zero trans fat, pretzels have a lot of salt on them. And real veggie chips, 80% less fat than potato chips. Doesn't say less salt on any of them. So you really have to look, sodium 75 milligrams, Sodium 125, and sodium 230. So, our multi, multi grain 100% natural chips, <laughs> you would think. <laughs> and I think that's, that's one of the problems. People think that when it says all natural, it's healthy. They don't think that, you know, absolutely. because sometimes they don't have the taste, so they throw in more salt. Is that what's, that's absolutely, what's happening? Absolutely, absolutely. And salt is all natural. We get salt from the earth. It's an all-natural product, so there's no limitation on the sodium content in an all-natural product. So what was the winner there, Kim? Uh -huh. The multi-grain chips have the most salt. So which one has the least salt? <laughs> the well, which least which salt. ones are considered low sodium? Low sodium, yeah. These are the lowest ones, the Very veggie good. chips. Although I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure I, <laughs> I would buy these. I would like them. Next, now this is the biggest one, Marie. So you have the toughest, <laughs> you have the toughest question. <laughs> okay. Out of these four products, can you tell me how many of them have added sugars? It could be zero, one, two, three, or four. So just you take a look at the labels. Let me know what you added sugars. Well, I would certainly hope milk has no added sugar. So I'm going to say no. There's no added sugar. This one says sugar-free on it. So there's no added sugars there. This one definitely has added sugar because I see cane or beet sugar as a second ingredient beyond, I think water was the first one. Yep. <laughs> so it's more than the juice. <laughs> and this says 100% juice. So there's no added sugar. So this is the only one with added sugar. Winner, winner. Now normally people people think they see the sugars listed under the carbohydrates in milk and they say, wow, milk has 12 grams of sugar in it. But it's naturally but occurring. But it's naturally occurring okay. sugar. So that is the trick with these products. Lindsay, all of these foods don't even have labels. So where do we stand? Absolutely. So the fresher produce, the fresher food items, they're not going to have labels unless they're prepackaged. And as you can see here, we just have the fresh products. This is a good sign. Seems like when a good we're not, choice. We're not having a lot of ingredients. We're just eating from the earth. So this is a great option as well. Lindsay has a whole schedule of events every month from free label reading workshops to events focused on diet and specific health issues. She even has cooking seminars. 
You and a friend could win a chance to attend one of those classes. Just find us on Facebook, check out the February album, and like the proper photo for your chance to win. Stick around. Next, we head to Stroudsburg to pick up the paintbrush and connect with our creative side. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. If you're looking for a creative outlet and something you can do when it's too cold to venture outside, we have the perfect idea. Marie and I decided to get in touch with our artistic side. <laughs> that is exactly what we did when artist Will Daskal invited us to his classroom at the Pocono Arts Council in Stroudsburg. You can learn acrylic painting and even watercolor art. Neither of us have spent any time painting since we were kids, <laughs> <No>. have we? <laughs> but of course, we decided it was time to pick up those paintbrushes again. Hi, welcome, welcome. Look what I have for you. You ready? Yay, we're ready. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah, we're ready. All right. Come cool. on inside and let's make it happen. <laughs> This is it, this is home. This is where I teach all my classes for the Pocono Art Council, well, here in Stroudsburg. And if you come down here to the next table, we'll get started. What if we mess up? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you only have one you're, piece you're of not, paper. You're not gonna mess up, you're not gonna mess up. He doesn't think I'm going to mess up. <laughs> Your goal is not to make a painting that's an exact copy of this, but to use this to give you an idea of what you could use from it to create a painting. Seems kind of because crazy to just sort of go with it. Just go with it, let it happen. <laughs> and once you put it down, leave it. Just leave it. Right, don't put paint on top of paint. That's really nice. Oh, I'm so afraid that it's gonna be wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> just hit the white parts. Don't be afraid to go back, get more paint and water. Remember, that's gonna dry much lighter than it looks. When you have something you like, just leave it, okay? Yeah. So right. that's the first step. And don't worry about how it looks now. Every good painting goes through what I call the ugly phase. <laughs> Everyone. I just, I can't believe what I did. The ugly phase. What can I do to make it better? <laughs> Listen, you're gonna have fun and that's why you're here. Yes. That was a great stroke. You actually got a technique called wet into wet. When you put down that reddish orange stroke, it hit the wet paint just above it and it's starting to mix on its own. Leave it, let it go, just did like that. Did you do that. that on purpose no, or by I accident? I have no idea what I did. We <laughs> call that a happy accident, <laughs> okay? I'm good at happy accidents. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's the only reason I do it. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing you would it. do it. Especially at my age. So far, I feel like I haven't messed up. You haven't That's messed up. Neither thing. one of you have messed up. <laughs> and, and the good part is, no matter what you do, it's going to be yours. You're going to so own your own piece. So you can't See, mess up when, unless when you When this say happens you did. like this, leave it. Just let it happen. Just go with it and just continue across. And always keep changing a little, add a little to it. You're doing a good job. Very nice, Marie. I hope so. If you look now, you can start to see shapes materializing in your background. You can start to see leaf shapes. Yes. Just materializing. Is that good or do I keep going over it? No, that's fine. Now what we want to do is vary the color. Colors. So add a little yellow to a spot, add a little more red to one spot. There you go. Now go get a different color. Where I have like spaces where there's nothingness. Leave it. Yeah, you know why? Light. Here, now here's why. The human brain only needs 70% of any data in order to get a concept of what the thing is. We always want to leave something for the viewer to get involved in. And is that why, like, I notice things like this, when you look at them from far away, you, it seems different than when you get really up close and start scrutinizing. Correct. The actual best distance to view any artwork is about seven feet. And they're both different, they're, they're both unique, and they each have their own characteristics, which is great. Yours is orangey and more yellowy and orangey than mine. That's mine okay, is. because you see things through a different pair of colored glasses. <laughs> I think it just kind of happened, <laughs> for me anyway. <laughs> Don't tell anybody I do this. Here. Okay, because there's just a three. We've only got a camera here. We won't tell anyone. There's a camera here? We don't 
don't tell anybody. <laughs> now, I want a little texture here. Now watch. Oh. And it looks like there's things growing back there. And that's just... Yeah, just load the brush up and gently, and just a little bit here and there. There you go. Now look, it suddenly looks like there's leaves growing back there. That's it. There you go. Here you go. It is tough. I feel so like you have to like relax and like not think about anything. Run. Oh, when I do this, I don't think about anything. Yeah. Well, it's hard to, to think look at the about shape. anything else. And with the mat, it just changes everything. So you can take your script line of brush and mm -hmm. you can sign it right here in the dryer. What's the rule about signing? Do you have to come up with a pen name? Until you start selling, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Absolutely not. All Just right. have fun. Just have fun. That is a very nice job. Thank you. I think that's the best part. For your, for your first time, that's a really nice job, okay? And I have to tell you, that if I saw this in a gallery, I would give it a lot of consideration. Ooh, Kimberly, you Stru are intense. Structurally, I like this it's part. very sound. I would probably say this would be a really nice piece to mat and frame, sign it right here, and that's, that's a winner. <laughs> All right. I don't usually win at anything, you know. Well, you won today, babe. You won today. Okay? I think you weren't as free to mixing I, colors up as I was. I, I think I was a little very bit... proud of both of you. <laughs> Check out our finished artwork. We haven't run out to get them matted and framed, <laughs> but maybe we will. <laughs> we really enjoyed our art lesson, and Will Daskal is a great instructor and very patient, isn't he? Oh, he was so patient. <laughs> In fact, thanks to Will and the Pocono Arts Council, one lucky viewer and a friend can enjoy an art class with Will. Just go to our Facebook page and like the right photo for your chance to win. You'll have a great time. And if you enjoy art and want to learn more about the Pocono Arts Council, just visit their website or stop in their studio on North 7th Street in Stroudsburg. Talk of the Town will be right back. We head to a local restaurant where the chef adds love to all her recipes. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. You know we love to try new recipes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and that is exactly what we're doing this month as we try traditional French cuisine. <laughs> the executive chef at the Broadway Grill and Pub, Zoraida Rivera, invited us for a cooking lesson to make one of her specialties and a French favorite. I'm going to make you work today. That's okay. We like work. That. So, and we like to eat too. Yeah. This is a big knife. <laughs> a big knife. <laughs> so we're going to start today by making a classical French dish. And it's called bouillabaisse. And bouillabaisse is, goes, is a Provencal dish. It's, it's very uh, classic. It used to be for the poor people and then became an aristocrat kind of dish. So okay. over there, it's made by fish that people did not buy in the ports anymore because it was left over and they used it to, to make this kind of dish. Uh, through the years, it's developed into many things and now in America, well, we do it our way. All right, so let's get busy. Let's get busy. Since you all wanted to work hard and you told me you love chopping and dicing, <laughs> I have a nice onion here for you. Okay. And I have a lick. Um, I'm sure you know what a lick is. Actually, we have one in our right presentation here. over there. Mm -hmm. And lick is one of those things that has a lot of flavor. Uh, it's almost like in the family of the onion, but very lighter, much sweeter. So <laughs> when you do that, I'm going to start my pan over here. I already have olive oil over there, just a few drops. I put a little butter, and you're going to start smelling the flavors. Yes. This is the way I will do stock. You put some carrots and some celery in there? Yeah, this is called a meal pois. When mm -hmm. you put um, onions, carrots, celery in your pan, you kind of like, you know, uh, roast it a little bit. We, we don't want that to turn any color. We want it to be translucent. Mm -hmm. And so for this particular uh, fish stock, I'm going to use also fennel. Mm -hmm. Big fennel is like an anise, anise kind of root, has an anise flavor, mm -hmm. very fragrance. I love aromas in the food, so I'm, I'm part of my race here. 
And you do all of your your vegetables that you're putting in this uh, boulevard, you chop them off very small. Yeah, very small because uh, what you want to really show, and it, actually this is going to be for the stock, and we're going to strain this. Mm -hmm. And then oh, we're going to okay. start again for the boulevard. So here's some leeks. Leeks are also great flavor. Um, I try to keep things in order so that that you know where you're going next. Yes. For someone who might want to be trying this at home, what advice do you have for them? The first advice I have, you know, when we cook at home, this that I've done over here, I call mise en place. And mise en place means that I cut everything before I start. Mm -hmm. Everything is chopped, everything is in a glass or in a bowl. And when I start my cooking, I don't have to go to the fridge, to the closet, anywhere. My, everything is right there. And you realize, oh gosh, I have no carrots. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know that happens many times, yes. Mm -hmm. So, oh my gosh, I have no carrots. That's the right example. So if you do this, you're, you're covered your bases. You're covered, right? and, and yeah. you know everything you have. Now, the stuff that we're doing right now is, is one thing you can do the day before. Because mm -hmm. I, it's a fact that many things taste better the day later. Mm -hmm. okay, they so yeah, they, I, they get the, all right. the flavors they they simmer right. in together. Yep. Exactly. So this, um, I'm just gonna put a little salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and as you can see, completely translucent. Mm -hmm. Already smells. Yeah, it smells, oh, good. smells you know, wonderful. Smells very good. Zoraida let us in on her secret ingredient. Saffron, the Spanish herb, adds a wonderful flavor, and although it's pricey, you need just a pinch. Like a can like this is like a hundred and something dollars, so you want to use it's it, you know. Expensive, yeah. Uh huh. And you, you want to put just a little bit, just and when you put the hot water to it, that just opens the flavor. Now your stock just needs some water and, of course, some white wine. Wine in here, and again, you can see and smell the fragrance and how. It sizzles, and that's really what you want. On to the main ingredient for this bouillabaisse, Zoraida adds a combination of fresh seafood. So first I'm gonna start with scallops, and I'm gonna put them upside down. I, you know what, I've never bought scallops in the shell. I just buy them. Well, they're very hard to find around here. Uh, I have two giant clams. I have little clams. It, it depends on what you like. Some people like, I love clams. Mm -hmm. I eat them any size, but a lot of people like uh, tiny the little, little clams. And you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're beautiful. The colors are beautiful. I, I'm always amazed of what nature can do. Yeah, you know, absolutely. they're so beautiful. Here I have barra, barrabundi fish, which is one of the fish that you, we should be using these days. I'm gonna put some garlic in here. I'm gonna put some shallots in here. I'm going to put another piece of butter to give it a little thickness. Um, butter in pieces, stick in the food. The pernod, which is that clear cup you see down there. And what is this again? Pernod is a French liqueur. Very, it's in between the anise and... I can smell it. I was going to say, I smell it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you like cooking with wines and alcohol? Oh, no, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. That, that is the idea. <laughs> Cooking, yeah. Yes, you know, butter, alcohol, and all of that. <laughs> you stir that around. I smell it already. Mm -hmm. Can you smell it? Smells good, yes. It's, just, it's an incredible aroma. Mm -hmm. And you know, for that right now, I'm going to use uh, fresh pepper, fresh salt, sea salt, and I'm going to add uh, my stock. And then we want to bring that to a high. Zoraida helped us with the dish presentation. All the seafood should be presented in its shell for an added wow factor. The traditional fish stew also needs a piece of crouton bread and the chef's special rui to be complete. I will put this on top of your plate and you decide if you want to stir this in that liquid after you taste it and uh, crunch it. Yeah, or, yeah, or just yes. keep it separate. Yes. And what's in what's this? What's in here is a boiled potato, pieces of garlic, uh, a roasted red pepper, olive oil, and herbs. And mm -hmm. the herbs could be parsley and basil, for example, very good herbs for that. Uh, you pass it through a fruit processor, and with the olive oil, slowly adding. So it's really a type of aioli. Mm -hmm. uh, mayonnaise, if you want to call it that, uh, or a spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Mm -hmm. um, and you do not have to have this to make that. Uh, it's really, over here, the, the, the master dish, 
is the bully base. Well, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now it's time to taste it. Well, wait, wait. We need the <laughs> wine to taste that. Oh, absolutely. And, and we decided to pair this dish with a Puy Fousset, which is a French wine from the 18th century and just has carried over. And I have Trey over here that has a bottle. She's going to open and pour it for us. Okay, uh, but I do not want your food to get cold, so feel free to Please, start I've tasting. Been, I've been dying to try this for quite a while. we pour this wine. Yeah. And is, uh, there a, is there a proper way to try it, or I can just no, try it? No, you can just. I would say, I feel I, like I this to is to just. Kind of help. Get some of the Remember, meat. an addicting dish to get you going, so Ooh. just eat it however you feel however most comfortable. Mm. It's all, you know, in family here, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's good? Mm -hmm. I can taste your love. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> but can you taste the fennel? <laughs> <laughs> the fennel and the saffron. I'm and tasting the saffron. The saffron. Yes. It really is a wonderful flavor. I wasn't sure what it would be. Yeah, but it's kind of like a sweet, no sweet. Uh, it's really yeah, it's lovely. It has a whole range of flavors in there that just they melt in your mouth, and you know. And, and now is when you should taste your wine. Now we should take, take a sip of the wine. Yes. Not before we toast. Absolutely. <laughs> To a wonderful chef. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Salute. much. Salute. Salute. We had a great time cooking bouillabaisse with Chef Zoraida Rivera. And all month long, her famous fish stew will be on special at the Broadway Grill and Pub in Jim Thorpe. One lucky viewer will win a $50 gift card for dinner at the restaurant. Just visit our Facebook page and like the correct photo for your chance to win. Good luck. We'll be right back with some great ways that you can beat the winter blues with a friend. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, everyone. Lots of people get the winter blues this time of year. The days get shorter and we spend much more time inside because it's so cold. But I've got an idea to help. Grab some pretty colorful flowers and go visit a friend. Hi, Kim. Come Hi, on in. Me. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. I brought you some flowers. Aww. They're so colorful, I thought they would look pretty and make you happy. Oh, let's put them in some water. Flowers can really improve your mood. And some scientific studies even say they can reduce anxiety. And they look so pretty on your table. And they'd look really good on your table, too. Now, I know it's nice and cozy in your house, <laughs> but before we get too comfortable, I want you to put your coat on and go outside for a walk with me. All right, gloves and hat, too. <laughs> OK. As long as it's sunny outside, I love going out, even if it's just to stop and tip my head up and soak up some sun rays. Feels good on my face. It sure does. And the vitamin D is also very beneficial. Doctors say you should try and get 20 minutes of sunshine every day. People who don't get any sun can sometimes develop depression. Mm, no depression here, but it is kind of cold. Can we go inside now? Yes, let's go. <laughs> Great smells in your home also have a way of improving your mood. Like when you're baking, for example, chocolate chip cookies, one of my favorites, they make the whole house smell great. But if you're short on time, try this. Take a small pot of water and add things like cinnamon, some cloves, apples, and some vanilla. And then just let it simmer. And add water all day long. It's so simple and it just smells great. Color on the kitchen table is also a great idea. That's why I bought you the beautiful flowers. Hey, thanks again for those. Here's another idea. How about a colorful bowl of fresh fruit? Now that looks great. And fresh fruit is a wonderful way to help you chase away the winter blues. Well, fresh fruit is always great, but sometimes you just need some comfort food. Chocolate, that's my go-to get happy food. <laughs> well, you are in luck because I brought a box Ooh. of chocolates that I got for Christmas and I haven't broken into them yet. So you can have your choice, milk or dark. Oh, dark. I am a dark chocolate girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go for one of each. You know what would be really good? Fruit and chocolate. Oh, yeah. How about some strawberries? I've got the chocolate. 
And I've got the strawberries. <laughs> Let's start creating. What a great day. I'm so glad you came to visit. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. But you have to be careful with all this comfort food. You don't want to eat too much because then you'll feel guilty. That's right. And you may pack on the pounds. But it is chocolates and strawberries, so <laughs> how bad can it be? Hey, while this sets up, how about we go for some pampering? I'm in. Pampering is a great way to unwind, and we can catch up on what's been going on in our kids' lives. We can. Pampering also produces feel-good hormones, which are really important this time of year. Just like good wine. <laughs> Good. So how are the triplets? After that, it's time to get cozy. I love fuzzy socks. There's nothing better after a long day of work than getting cozy with your fuzzy socks. <laughs> and your friends. And your wine. <laughs> and some chocolate. <laughs> the, the heck, heck with, with the, the winter, winter blues. blues. February is all about your Valentine. We already shared a main dish recipe earlier in the show, and of course, Marie and I can always come up with a reason to whip up chocolate covered strawberries. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted something extra special for your Valentine's sweet tooth, so of course, the perfect person is Lisa Deemer at Kitchen Chemistry. She specializes in adding the wow to Valentine's Day dessert. Yum, it smells so good in this store. I am hungry just being in here. <laughs> Look at all these cupcakes. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Hi, ladies. You came just in time. I'm just ready to put together some great Valentine treats. Oh. Come on back. Wow. OK, we're going to be creating cocktails today. That sounds exciting. I've never heard of cocktails before. Cup <laughs> right. Well, it's mixing two great Valentine things together, sweets and cocktails. Yay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make a margarita, right? You are making a margarita, okay. correct. And I'm putting strawberries and champagne <laughs> together, my two favorites. You so. got it. You got it. And I'm going to be creating a raspberry chambord treat. Oh, okay. Fun. okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do here is color a little bit of sugar. It's very simple, and you can create the whole rainbow. It really doesn't matter. So I'm okay. going to give you here a half a cup. I'll hold. And all we're going to do is add some powdered um, color. It's going to add a nice hue without adding any liquid. There we go. And then stir just it around. Sit, just seal the bag up and shake away. Shake it up. That's so Get simple. Get a little aerobics exercise in there. Yeah. <laughs> Always good when you're making desserts. Yeah. And it's easy, but it's oh, it uh, turns really pink right away. Yep. Yeah. Turns pink right away. You need only a little bit of color. Okay, and then now if you want to really jazz it up, we're going to add a little bit of cake litter to it. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Ooh, and then shake pretty. that up. This sounds like a fun thing to do with the kids or just, you know, yourself when you're making a Valentine you're treat. You're not kidding. It'll make the table look festive too. Exactly. Look how easy That's that is. Pretty. You see the little oh, glitter? Oh, the glitter. Very yes. sparkly. That's cute. So now, in order to get this onto your glass, wet a washcloth mm -hmm. and then go ahead, just rub that right around and then you're all set. <laughs> Good job, Ray. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's all right. The table's clean. That's for sure. And then just drop it in there and spin away. Beautiful. Ooh, Isn't nice. that gorgeous? Yes. I love this sugar tip. Isn't that something? Very pretty. Okay. So now we're going to do the fun things. We're going to bring over some cupcakes. <laughs> Next to my mess. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave them there. And then you're going to decide what flavor cupcake. Now, normally for the margarita, we made some great lemon flavored mm -hmm. margarita cupcakes. Those on that side. Yes. Okay. And then, Kim, you can choose vanilla or chocolate because strawberries and champagne go with both. She's okay. going for the chocolate for sure. <laughs> Which one should I take? <laughs> okay. And I'll take the vanilla. Wow, they smell really good. Isn't yes. that great? So what we're going to do now is just take the wrapper off, and you're going to split the cupcake right in half. So you can cut it with a knife, Top or you can just break it right oh, in half. Break it in half that way, OK. Now I'm going to just lay the bottom half of the cupcake in the bottom of the, of the glass. OK. And I'm going to give you guys your matching liquor, tequila, <laughs> and then champagne. Thank you. And I'm going to take some Chambord. 
Okay. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to just put a couple of drops. If you're nervous about pouring, you can always use a little <laughs> a little um, dropper. <laughs> a but, couple of drops, did just, you say? Yeah, a couple of drops. <laughs> just a little bit. Mine just, mine just like soft into the cup. Yeah, yeah. It just went put right. Put you have to, yep. <laughs> hey, whatever works. <laughs> okay. I did it twice. We'll see how it goes. See that? Yep. Now what we're going to do is throw in some fresh fruit and um, or some fruit filling. Okay. okay. So take a squirt of your filling. You have lime. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have strawberry. strawberry. And you have strawberry. And we're going around the outer yep. edge here? Again, go around the outer edge because you want... pretty from out. Exactly. You want to put a nice little rim. And then just spin into the middle so that you have a nice full serving there. Okay. Now, Kim, in your case, you might want to throw a couple of little sliced fresh strawberries in there. I'm loving that idea. And you can throw in a little layer of lemon, because margarita's got all that well, citrus course. going on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put more cake on there. So we're going to take our top and do it again. And now we just repeat. Now, if you wanted to, um, what we can do is take a second cupcake because now the rim is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So take a second cupcake. Now we're talking. <laughs> right, and rip this one in half. And then take the bottom half and rip that in half. I'm so violent, right? Just rip it, rip it, rip it. And then tough, stuck, um, stuff that into the sides there. Perfect. Great, so now you'll see a little more cake, another little texture to your, to your dessert. Mm -hmm. And then just repeat, on this layer, you're gonna put um, a little squirt of your icing too. So you have chocolate icing. Okay. Do we do that and first or after we do the other side? Um, whatever, whatever you like, whatever you like. So you can put the filling in first. I like mixing it all up. Yes. This is such a great idea that people can do at home. So and you easy. could do this with your Valentine and make it fun. Exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna just throw a little more flavor on there. Hey, you're getting some fruit in there too, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> One serving, maybe. <laughs> right, right. And then what we're gonna do is take the cake topper, okay. and then we're gonna just put cover the top of the cupcake with a, a dollop of icing. Okay, I think I can handle it. You can do that, look at that. Wow, Kim, you're a pro. <laughs> wow, that looks really good, Kim. Yay! <laughs> now, we're always about garnish and about um, the, the accessories, so I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of chocolate ganache on top, and I tend to use a little bit of a smaller tip uh, on the, the bag. I just cut a small bag off so that we don't overload it. But if you like chocolate, you can cut the tip bigger and you get a thicker band of it's Whatever of works for you, right? Yeah, whatever. But this looks boat. pretty. I, li I agree with you. I like the fine. The fi you can still make it a lot. Right. Now you have cute little things to decorate. Exactly. They go on top too? Yep. What I usually do on a strawberry cupcake, I would take a fresh berry and stick it on top yeah, and then maybe sprinkle, sprinkle a couple of lips on there or sprinkles or mm -hmm. hearts, whatever you like. And then on your case, mm -hmm. you can grab a couple of little lines. Yeah, the ones I dumped. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> and you can put those on top there. Okay. Well, definitely we need one like that. Yes. I'm almost thinking like you could even like do a little... Yeah, off to the side. I want a couple of these too. Yes, a couple little sprinkles. Of course, you can dig right in now, and I do have spoons. <laughs> there are spoons right there for you. Um, you can also let it set for a little while, and then the fruit will, and the cake will absorb the liquor and mm -hmm. um, taste great it as tastes well. So and you don't have to use alcohol. I don't know if we said that before. If you're not into the alcohol, you can use a simple syrup, or you can use just sparkling water, mm -hmm. or juice. You could even use juice. Ooh, absolutely. I say we toast. That's with it. Our Very nice. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Woo! Yay! <laughs> okay. Let's eat. <laughs> it's so pretty, I almost don't want to dig I in. I know, mm -hmm. right. While we dig in, tell us about your shop. Okay. Well, we're right on Main Street in Stroudsburg, and what we are is a cake decorating, candy making, and soap making supply house, as well as gourmet cupcakes. Uh, we teach classes and all of the things, cake decorating, candy making, things like this. We do cup, uh, cake pop classes, and around Easter we'll do homemade marshmallow candy classes and caramel classes, everything that's mm -hmm. going on in the times. We, we have a class for it because we want to encourage people to do these things and have their families enjoy all the fun stuff they make. This is so good. This is really good. <laughs> very, very good. And the, the great thing is you have all of the supplies right here in the shop to be able to do these things. Exactly. We spend a lot of time searching out stuff that you can't just get anywhere. 
And you want to do something nice for a viewer? You have a gift certificate you're going to give us? I do. I love sharing everything that we have here. <laughs> so we're going to give a $20 gift card to one of your lucky winners. Ooh. Just go to our Facebook page, like the right photo for your chance to win, and then you can make <laughs> one of these yummy, yummy exactly. cake tails yes. yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow, with all of this, probably we should exercise. <laughs> we should exercise. How about something with a little bit of hip, hip action? action. <laughs> Come on, Lisa! Woo. You know Kim and I are always ready to get moving. If I don't exercise regularly, I start to feel lazy. Me too. But this month, we do something I haven't done since I was a kid on the playground. And I can honestly say I tried it as a kid on the playground, but I was never at all successful. We first met Danny Davison last summer at Mock Chunk Lake. She was pretty hard to miss. Fire hoop is intoxicating because when you're inside of it, you can't see past the flames and you can't hear. It's the roar of the flames that makes it so, so invigorating. Danny is a hoop instructor at Jim Thorpe Yoga Studio. She found us on Facebook and invited us to hoop it up. You're going to be taking the hoop dance fitness class and it is a full body workout, <laughs> cardio and toning, and we learn to spin hoops, sometimes one, sometimes many, from our head down to our feet. Now if we were the kid that spun the hula hoop playing on the playground and you could spin it like five times and then it ended up around your ankles, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> of course, because they're not the same as your childhood hoops. Everybody move in. Come on in, don't be afraid of the camera. Come on in the class. This is Bob, by the way. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. <laughs> really glad to see you. <laughs> There are two ways that you can choose to move. One is side to side, going back and forth like this, or you can stand one foot in front of the other and rock into it. Come on, I know. Turning off your mind definitely helps with hula hooping, too. By the way, it's a fun, silly activity. Don't give it too much thought. Maybe helps me go right down to my ankle. If your hoop is starting to fall down, starting to go down, go faster. This is also what you can do to bring it up. <laughs> Marie, this is my lucky hoop. <laughs> I need the lucky hoop. Many people have tried to buy my lucky hoop and I won't sell it. That, that, that's a my good hoop. <laughs> so when you start it, you want to make sure you're starting it nice and flat and straight and give it a nice firm push. It'll start moving you and respond to it. That's it, move faster. That's it. It's my lucky hoop. Oh, okay. What is different about this hoop? It's my lucky hoop. <laughs> so I think about the other one was cursed. <laughs> Even if you can't maintain it at your waist, there's something that I can teach you to do. There's some trick. I have not, knock on wood, had a single student that I haven't found their niche. We just have to find it, whether it's hooping with it on your arms or learning how to do simple illusions and tricks or on your waist or on your foot. I lost, I lost over 20 pounds my first summer when I got a hula hoop. I wasn't expecting it. I had just had my son and I was doing it strictly for exercise and had no intention of it going anywhere else. All right, see how, just, try turning in the same direction as it. Go ahead, turn, keep turning. <laughs> gotcha, I, Bob. I, I warned him. Go the other direction. For most people, this is very odd, and we don't know why. Why is it odd to go the other way? Go the other hand. Good, Mom, good. Almost like that, you would just throw it. Turn, you turn with it. The hand is Don't get the T-Rex arm. Bring your arms out, bring them up, play with the hoop space, just don't do the T-Rex arm or anything else. Wave them around with sneaky arms. Didn't work that time. Also, let's try a slightly different movement. 
Now remember, Danny's class at Jim Thorpe Yoga Studio is a hoop dance fitness class. That means there's much more than just hip action. You don't want it angle at your face. Get it up there. And just you just give it a good hard spin. Oh, she's so fast. <laughs> My girls and I, we often make the comment that we burn as many calories laughing as we do hula hooping. So if that's true, we're gonna burn around a thousand calories. And I say bring that on. That sounds good to me. After a hoop Pilates section, Danny got out a huge hoop, appropriately named Big Mama. Danny is also a performer for hire. She's full of tricks. Next, she got out an LED hoop and showed us her stuff. Danny, so how do you think we did in our first hooping class? Fantastic, you ladies were both impressive. Not at the beginning, I wasn't. And we did really good with the yeah. tandem hooping. We did. I wonder if it's because we're like the same, yeah. similar size. Could be. I felt like, you know what, I wasn't sure I would be able to do it, but I felt like I got the knack of at least the hip part going. And the foot hooping. You were doing really good with the foot hooping. And you learned, uh, you taught me a new move with the foot hooping. Foot hooping in bridge. Danny wants you to enjoy a hoop class at Jim Thorpe Yoga. Like the proper photo on our Facebook page for your chance to win a hoop class pass for two, so you and a friend can give it a whirl. You'll also get a 50% discount if you'd like your very own custom handmade hula hoop. Give hooping a try and be the top of the town. going to finish off your grand finale by taking your icing and make oh. whoop, yep, it's okay we saved it it's saved <laughs> Marie you haven't even drank wow, any tequila yet <laughs>